We're going to go ahead and share the word of the Lord. Got time here. We want to share his word. Nothing like a privilege of hearing his word tonight. And so Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 11. Hang on, I'm going to give my title before I, I read my text tonight. Uh, and that is, uh, don't forget to put your shoes on. Don't forget to put your shoes on. Praise God. Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 11. And thou shalt eat it with thy loins girded, your shoes on your feet, with your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Thank God. When Israel was getting ready to leave Egypt, when they was getting ready to get out of bondage, thank God, the Lord told them, I want you to be ready to go. I want you to have your shoes on, thank God, and I want you to eat as fast as you can because you're fixing to get out of this place. Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse number 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy day is, so shall thy strength be. Thank God. Once they got in the wilderness, God promised them that their shoes would not wear out on their feet, and whatever kind of shoes they had need of, he would give it to them. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 15 says, And your shoes feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Thank God. Every time a person is born again, God gives you some shoes to put on. Let's just ask his help tonight. God, we pray that you can just bring an anointing and a freshness. Thank you for what you've already done. God, we could go home right now and say, hey, we had church and we thank you for what the spirit has done tonight. I give you praise for it and we honor you tonight in Jesus name. Thank you for it. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. We could go home right now and say we had church. But I'm glad that, um, you know, we can have his word even though we've had church. And so it's great to feel what God is doing. Jennifer, so good to see you. You've been a while. I'm glad you're here in the house of the Lord with us tonight. Praise God. And so God is faithful. He knows how to do things. And so what God's already done for you, thank God, he will, thank God, just continue. If you'll let him just continue what he started in your heart tonight. Heard something kind of funny the other day, and uh, this guy, he had brought him a, a parrot, and the parrot could just talk up a storm, but it was very, it was always saying sarcastic things, always saying mean things and ugly things, and finally the, the new owner just couldn't stand it anymore. He grabbed that parrot, he throwed it in the freezer, and he just closed the lid down, and he could just hear that parrot in there just uh, griping and saying all kind of sarcastic things. And after a while, he got real quiet. So he reached in there and pulled him out because he figured he was about to freeze to death. And that old parrot, finally, when he thawed out, he said, I won't ever do that again. I'm going to always be nice. I'll always do whatever you want me to do. I'm going to speak kind things and good things. I'll never act like that anymore. Thank God. And the man said, man, that's great. He said, well, I want to know what you did to that turkey in there. What that turkey did in there is what I want to know. Because <laughs> whatever that turkey did, he sure didn't want to do that. But anyway, you know, life is short. But it's good to have a laugh every once in a while. But, you know, shoes are an important part of our, our, our dress. When we think about getting dressed, we always think about shoes and things. And so if you um, don't believe that, will you just ask any of the ladies here about shoes? And all of us men have been in that uh, moment where that our wife says, you know, I don't have any shoes to wear. But there's 30 pair of shoes in there, but she don't have a pair of shoes to wear. And what she's really saying is that I don't have a pair of shoes that will match this just like I want it to match it, you know. So I need another pair of shoes. But anyway, you know, shoes are, are part of dress. And, uh, and, of course, you know, there are shoes that are very important in, in workplaces. They're right kind of shoes for right kind of jobs. And some jobs you need very heavy-duty shoes. Other times you need shoes that are very light and uh, can deal with uh, slippery surfaces and all of those things. And so... Shoes have a very unique purpose. And God is concerned about your feet. He's concerned about what you have on your feet. And so um, he wants to be uh, not only have the right thing on your feet, he wants your feet to go in the right places because, um, you know, we sing a little song, be careful little feet where you go. And so we need to be careful where we go. In the Old Testament, it was said that he would give them shoes of iron and of brass because they would be going into war and they would be in battle and they would be things to protect their feet. And so when you come to the New Testament, it's no surprise that in the New Testament, he also gave us some shoes to, for our battle. And so uh, don't forget to put your shoes on is what I want to preach to you about tonight. In Ephesians, as we are told that uh, the, the parts of our pieces of armor uh, for our battle, he told us about some shoes in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 15. And your feet shod with a preparation of the gospel of peace. And when you think about your, your feet, 
and you think about what God put on our feet was he shod at our feet with the uh, gospel of peace. And, um, you know, it just feels good to say peace. There is something uh, wonderful about the word peace. Thank God. What a wonderful feeling it is to be at, at peace. You know, to be at peace with yourself, to be at peace with your fellow man. Matter of fact, the Bible says, be at peace with every man as much as possible. In other words, there's going to be some folks that you're just going to have to endure. You know, you can't, they're not, they're not going to ever be happy. It don't matter. So just, just kind of just in, put up with them. But as much as possible, live at peace with all men. Thank God. Uh, you know, if you, um, it just feels good to say peace. Um, the world where we live at is there is no peace. And, you know, uh, it's been said that um, the only peace that there is is just the, the pause between everybody reloading before they, they start another war. Uh, but real peace is a, an inside job. It's something that you have to understand that I can have peace no matter what's going on around me and no matter what the world is throwing at me, no matter what I'm having to endure, there is a place where that I can have peace. That is why the, the first um, step to peace is to find God. And when you find God, you're going to find the opportunity to have peace. Now, I know that it's possible to have God and to not be at peace, but I'm telling you, he has given you some shoes, and if you'll put your shoes on every day, you're going to be amazed at how that the peace of God can go with you in every situation that you have to deal with. The Bible says the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, and it's joy in the Holy Ghost. There's a good reason that you don't want to forget to put your shoes on. There are some things that you are going to have to put under your feet. And to put those things under your feet, it's just good to have your shoes on. Romans chapter 16 and verse number 20 says, And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. Thank God, shortly. And so what he's really saying is if you got your shoes on, when you put your head on that devil's head and, and squash him in the ground where he wants him to stay, and, God, and some of you today, you need to realize you need to get the devil off your shoulder and get him under your feet where he belongs because that's where God put him at. And so he says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And so we need to keep the devil under our feet. Jesus said it like this, behold, I give unto you the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So every day, thank God, don't forget to put your shoes on. When God saved you, he gave you peace and he wants you to continually walk in that peace. But it's like all the other armor. You have to put it on Every day, you have to uh, put your armor on daily. When you got the Holy Ghost, God gave you peace, but you have to put it on. Philippians chapter 4 and verse number 7 says, The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. What an amazing thing it is when you really understand that when your, your mind gets out of sort, when the enemy comes in like a flood, when there seems like there's a whirlwind going on, you just need to stop and remind yourself that the Lord has promised me that he can keep me, he can give me peace. Thank God. Uh, because peace of mind is something that he has promised us. And so I have to just reclaim it. Peace is available to you, but like all the other armor, you have to, and you have to make the effort to get it on. Everything, uh, everywhere we go, we're going to have situations where that if we want it to, it can take away our peace. But every day, there will be the things that will be there to try to steal the peace of mind. But God wants you to give give you peace in every situation. Romans chapter 15 and verse number 13 says, Now the God of hope shall fill you with all joy and peace and believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. So the power of the Holy Ghost, thank God, gives you joy and it gives you peace. I think of all too often we forget who we are. We forget and we're the child of the God of peace. We're not the child of, of the Satan anymore. We're the child of the God of peace and that he wants to fill you with peace. Peace didn't, um, 
you know, just happen in a vacuum, but you can have peace no matter what's going on around you. Peace isn't the absence of conflict. It's not the absence of problems and troubles. Some people think the only time they can have peace is when everything's going great, but you're not... You don't, we're not talking about that kind of peace. We're talking about a peace that God gives you. Peace in the presence of your storm. Peace in that we are trusting. And so peace is the presence of trust because it doesn't matter what's going on. There's something inside that just says everything's going to be all right. It's like a child that's in a dark, dark room that's not afraid. And the reason he's not afraid is because he's got his hand in his daddy's hand. And so he don't know what the dark has. He just knows that I got my hand in daddy's hand and whatever's here, no problem. He's going to take care of the fear or the night that's there. And somewhere you need to understand that one day you got your hand in the hand of the man that made everything happen. And he is more than enough to keep you no matter what's going on around you. And so there's a place is not uh, determined by our ability to see the future, but our our peace is determined by our ability to trust in the one that holds the future. When you become a child of God, he wants you to have that, that same confidence in him that a child has in their earthly father, some way that you can just have confidence that everything is in his hands. One of the biggest problems in living for God is just to learn to trust the Lord no matter what our circumstances are. Psalms 62 and 8 says, Trust in the Lord at all times, ye people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us, Selah. Hey, God, you know, you can have peace when you are sick. You can have peace when the finances aren't good. You can have peace when your kids aren't doing right. You can have peace when everything seems to be out of sorts. But somewhere on the inside, there can just be that settled peace. Like I had mentioned the other night concerning the, the depths of the ocean. In the depths of the ocean, there's always a calm. Although on the surface of the ocean, there's all kind of waves and and turbulence going on in the 30 feet below the surface everything is calm everything is moving and in, in the direction that that current is wanting it to move it's just that steady confident of flow and somewhere the bible wants us to, the lord wants us to have that the bible says without faith it's impossible to please god and the only way to get what god has promised you is to trust him and to just wait upon him god is looking for people who will believe him and take him at his word no matter what the circumstances is saying no matter how they're feeling no matter what anybody's done to you in spite of it all i'm just going to trust in him and the peace of god is going to surpass all of understanding and we all have uh, some uh, discouraging times we all have to walk by faith and um, sometimes we just have to remind ourselves this is going to pass God is going to show up as only he can show up and if you will have trust in him and just believe that no matter what comes no matter what goes God's in control thank God and there is an expected end God has an expected end for every one of us. And so sometimes you just need to understand this is the end that God has prepared for me. And so I'm just going to walk into it in faith. Praise God. Somewhere God is looking for uh, what uh, we see in that little Shudamite woman. You know, she was the one that had uh, had her husband to build the prophet a room on the side of her house. The prophet was so... Um, thankful he was so appreciative he said i want to do something for you and uh, gehazi his servant after he asked the woman what can i do for you can i make mention to the king can i do something nice for you she said no i've got everything i want i am happy i'm content and things and his servant said but she don't have any children and that was a, a great reproach in that day to not be able to have children and so the prophet said well in due time in nine months is what he was saying you're going to have a baby and the lady uh, said, look, don't, don't tell me things like that. Don't play with me because uh, I, don't, I don't appreciate that. He said, no, you're going to have a baby in nine months. And sure enough, in nine months, she got the joy of her life. She got her a little Luca into her life, and uh, she was so proud of him, and she loved him, and it was a wonderful thing, and she thanked God for it. But, you know, the amazing thing is, is that God took that little 
baby that she was so thankful for that was such a miracle to her. And he said, but I've got something greater I'm going to do for you. And the amazing thing is that some of us, you know, we get the first blessing that God's got for us. And when uh, that blessing seems to be taken away, when that situation seems to evolve into something different, uh, we don't realize that God's just setting us up for another miracle. He's setting you up for something greater to happen in your life. And sometimes, you know, we're trying to hold on to a dead baby when the Lord says, hey, you just need to uh, turn your eyes back to me. And she made her way to the prophet and she had so much faith in the power of God. She had so much faith in what God had given her that she said, God didn't give me this baby to take him away from me. And somewhere in her heart, she just knew that I don't know how it's going to happen, but God's going to do something because I know this isn't the end of the story. You remember the story, if you read it, how that uh, on her way there, uh, the prophet seen her coming. He sent his servant out there and said, ask her, is it well with herself? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And when he got there, he says, is it well with you? She said, yeah, it's well with me. Is it well with your husband? Yes, yeah, well with my husband. Is it well with the child? She said, it's well with the child. But the child was dead. But her face said, hey, everything's going to be all. It's well because I'm going to the one that can make a difference. And sometimes you just got to make up your mind. It doesn't matter if your promise is dead. It doesn't matter if your hopes are seems to all been dashed and nothing's going to work out the way that you want it to work out. You just got to stop and drop and realize that, hey, God, you didn't put me here to let me down. So just keep pressing because God can bring dead promises, dead dreams back to life. It's never too late with God. So keep your shoes of peace on and just know that what he has promised, he can do. Romans 8 and 28 says, and he and we know that all things work together to the good of them that love the Lord, to them that are called according to his purpose. And Paul said, uh, Paul didn't say, I, I hope everything's going to work out. I believe everything's going to work out. He says, I know, I know all things are working together for the good. Thank God. It was just not a few things, but he said, all things are going to work out. Not just some things are going to work out. All things are going to work out. And Paul didn't say all um, things are going to be good because there are going to be some things that aren't good, but in the end, Thank God. God's going to take even if it's bad, and he's going to work it out for good. So get your shoes of peace on. God can give peace into a troubled mind. God can give peace to a troubled life. God can give peace to a troubled marriage. God can give peace to whatever problems you're facing tonight. God gave, didn't give up, thank God, on you. And don't you give up on God because he is more than able to fix it. Thank God. And so you're fixing to get your promise but you got to keep your heart fixed on the one that can do what you can't do and the key is to get your trust in the lord thank god you may feel like you are on the the back side of a desert where that uh nothing good can come to you but god found moses on the back side of a desert 80 years old and never uh, thought he would ever be used of God after he missed the moment uh, earlier in his life, he thought. But tr the truth was, is God wasn't ready for him then, and God was waiting for his moment. And some of you need to understand God's got his moment, his time in your life. It's not what I think and not how I figure it's going to all work out, but he's going to work it all out. Don't ever think that, that God has forgotten about you, that God isn't concerned about you. God is concerned about you. Thank God. You're not a lost cause. You're not a hopeless case. Thank God. You can make it. Thank God. Fear was the way um, that the enemy has always tried to keep us from the things of God. And fear will always try to intimidate us. But God wants us to just understand that perfect love casteth out fear. Some way we just need to touch him. If God is for us, it really doesn't matter. Whatever you're up against, God is more than enough. God is ready to put some shoes on your feet. Thank God he's ready to put some joy in your soul. He's ready to put some peace in your mind. He's ready to give you strength that you didn't even know you could have because he is more than enough. And so just look to him while we're standing tonight. Thank God. He is ready to open some eyes. He really wants to just kind of open your eyes and just let you see that they that are for us 
are more than that against us. Sometimes all we see is everything that's against us. But I'm telling you, every time uh, the enemy brings something against you, God's got two angels working for you. Every time that the enemy shows up with one problem, thank God, God shows up with two blessings. He shows up with two answers. He shows up for two helping hands. You're not ever outnumbered. Praise God. You may, it may look outnumbered, but what you need is God just to open your eyes and to see that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's time that you just kind of roll some stones away. Thank God, it's time that you just kind of set your affections on some things above. God is ready to speak life into those dead hopes and dreams. Thank God, if you can roll the stone away, God can resurrect that hope that hope he can resurrect that dream thank god god has showed up to let you just know that it, it ain't over thank god there ain't no sin that he can't Amen. conquer there ain't no problem that he can't solve there's no chains that he can't break there's no need that he can't meet he's just more than enough tonight thank god he's ready to make you an overcomer praise god God didn't save you to fail. He saved you to be an overcomer. He saved you to be a victor and not a victim. And so, God, I'm praying that you just help me to be a victor tonight. You can make it because he put something in you that gives you this power to make it tonight. So get some of you just been going barefooted too long. Some of you need to get some shoes on your feet, get your mind made up. Get your heart fixed. Get your heart set. And just say, hey, I'm going through. I'm going to make it. Praise God. And so tonight, if you haven't been having peace, thank God, we got some shoes down here. You need to come pick you up a pair of shoes and say, hey, I'm taking these home with me tonight. Thank God. God bless you. Let's worship. If you need a need, thank God, why don't you just come? Let's just believe him. Let's just praise him for what he's already done tonight. People's already got the victory tonight.